The origins of this work came a number of years ago, back in 2004, when we founded our celiac center in response to the rapidly increasing numbers of patients with celiac disease we're seeing. We wanted to measure uh, a number of clinical outcomes in these patients. However, we quickly realized that the field was lacking in validated uh, clinical outcome measures for use in celiac disease. I would point out just quickly that TTG while is a wonderful test for diagnosis and has revolutionized the area, really it has, uh, the literature is clear that it's of limited value in the assessment of patients already on a gluten-free diet. For these reasons, we felt at that time that we needed to take a step back in order to move forward and really begin to create some validated uh, survey tools for use in celiac disease. This work has allowed us to produce two separate surveys, the Celiac Disease Adherence Test, which was published a number of months ago in CGH, and now the Celiac Symptom Index, or CSI, as I will refer to it uh, from here on. In the creation of the CSI, we use standard survey development techniques. We first convene an expert panel consisting of gastroenterologists, dietitians, psychologists, and patients with celiac disease to really discuss the important domains and symptoms relevant to life with celiac disease. Once this group had agreed upon a number of questions and suggested response scales, we brought this, uh, this preliminary questionnaire to a series of focus groups made up of patients with celiac disease. These focus groups both added items in areas felt to be deficient and also clarified question and answer uh, content um, for, for uh, better clarity of use. With this final, with this preliminary questionnaire, which was 36 items long, we brought this to 154 patients with biopsy-proven celiac disease. All patients completed the questionnaire along with uh, surveys of quality of life and dietary adherence. The, in the 154-person uh, uh, initial cohort, we did a number of important tests. We first looked at test retest reliability in a subset where the, test, the survey was recompleted two weeks later. Questions showing poor reliability between the two were discarded as random answering. We also looked for question redundancy when two questions were very similar, such as in fatigue and low energy level. In these cases, if the questions truly were highly correlated, we would choose the one best correlated with our external measures of quality of life and discard the other. Finally, we looked at uh, individual item responses for floor or ceiling effects where the vast majority of patients would either answer all the highest level or all the lowest level, suggesting poor discriminatory value, and these were also discarded. These steps left us with 16 uh, questions, which we then administered to a further 52 patients with celiac disease. We then put all the data together and looked at the responses in correlation with our external measures. Um, we found that the scores of the CSI were highly correlated with both the SF36, the EQ5D visual analog scale, both measures of quality of life, but also our a standardized gluten-free diet adherence uh, as measured by Melinda Dennis, our celiac nutritionist. These were all very suggestive that, these, that the questionnaire was measuring something both disease relevant and important to patients. Um, the, we also measured TTG in a subset of patients, um, in approximately 150 of these. However, we found no correlation between TTG titers and CSI scores. So the CSI scores a 16 item survey, five mul answer multiple choice uh, options. The whole survey takes patients on average less than three minutes to complete and is scored from 16 to 80 with lower scores suggesting lower symptom burden. In general, scores of 30 or less are correlated with excellent gluten-free diet adherence and high quality of life, together suggestive of clinical remission, whereas higher uh, scores, especially of 45 or greater, are consistent with poor gluten-free diet adherence and poor quality of life. So the CSI can use, be used either alone or in conjunction with biologic measures to really produce a more robust picture of celiac disease activity. We are optimistic that tools such as the CSI and the celiac disease adherence test can be used in clinical research settings, um, but also in clinical practice in a number of areas to help assess how patients are doing both on the individual and population level, and to assess effects of new interventions, such as uh, potentially th new pharmacologic agents for the treatment of celiac disease. Finally, I'd just like to take a second to acknowledge our patient participants. 
but also the Healthy Villi, who is our local celiac disease advocacy group, which we are very fortunate to be aligned with and helps greatly in participation, and the Celiac Sprue Association, who helped by providing some of the funding necessary to carry out this work. Thank you for your time.